Hello, future Rossies and pre-med explorers. This is Milena Garcia, your host for Ross University Checking the Post, a pre-med podcast. This is our mini podcast featuring facts and information about our medical program, insights from current students, and tips from practicing physicians. Each week, this podcast will be broken down in small episodes, focusing on one aspect of our program, also having guests talk about their own experiences as students and as doctors. Sports medicine is a specialty that focuses on physical fitness, treatment, and prevention of injuries related to sports and exercise. In this episode, we chat with Dr. Irvin Sulapas about his experience as a sports medicine doc. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us again. This week, we have Dr. Irvin Salapas joining us. Dr. Salapas, let's have you introduce yourself. All right. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm, my name is uh, Dr. Irvin Salapas. I am a Ross graduate, class of 2010. Um, I... Uh, a little bit of background of me, I'm from Houston, uh, Texas. Um, I currently practice in Houston, so I'm, I'm back home. Uh, I did my undergraduate at University of Texas in Austin, majored in biomedical engineering, and then went to Ross um, right after college. So more of the traditional route um, to go to med school. Um, did most of my rotations up in New York, um, enjoyed my third year, but the vast majority of my fourth year at Ross, I actually spent in Texas because I wanted to um, I wanted to do residency and practice back in the state I grew up in. Um, so I matched into family medicine at Texas Tech in Lubbock, which was my number one choice. Um, and I, and I was also chief resident, um, during my third year. And then I decided to stay another year and do a sports medicine fellowship. Um, Right after fellowship, I'm still currently at my first job after training. I am an assistant professor at uh, Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. So um, I haven't left Texas since fourth year in med school. (laughs) And why sports medicine? When did that interest start? Yeah, well, um, I didn't know sports medicine was a thing going in. I always wanted to do some primary care, and I still do. Um, But couple months into my intern year as a family medicine resident, um, I met the sports medicine fellows and I thought they were like the coolest people. Um, you know, Texas Tech uh, athletic apparel is Under Armour. So they had the Under Armour polos, Under Armour khakis, the shoes. Um, they always had to go travel with the team say, hey, I'm, I gotta go cover this football game or cover this soccer game. Uh, they had this nice, badge that said all access pass to all sports for the <laughs> academic year. I was like, oh, you, you guys are so cool. And cool all kids. they do is talk sports every day. I was like, <laughs> oh, this is a thing. I like it. I'm going to try for this. So, um, so I decided to, you know, prepare for us uh, to get into a sports medicine fellowship. Um, they let me tag along, um, you know, to cover high school games because I don't have the all-access badge to go to the other <laughs> <laughs> collegiate games. So um, did some re- research in the field, tried to submit some abstracts or posters, um, sports medicine, um, volunteered as a medical staff for the local Ironman that's in, in Lubbock. And, and, you know, just to show my interest um, in sports medicine, mm-hmm. uh, one of my mentors in residency was sports medicine trained too. So um, help me kind of guide me on, um, to be a competitive applicant and, um, yeah. And like you were, we may have some uh, prospective students that may not have known that sports medicine is a fellowship. So can you please talk a little bit more about that? What is a sports medicine fellowship? Sure. Sure. I'm going to backtrack a bit and say like, what is a fellowship at all? Um, so, you know, after medical school, you apply for residency and then you match into that residency field, whether it's internal medicine, OBGYN, surgery, family, whatever. Um, and that's three to five years, depending on what specialty you mm-hmm. choose. Um, a fellowship is basically subspecializing into that field, right? So how do you become a cardiologist? You do internal medicine first and then go to cardiology. 
How do you become a cardiothoracic surgeon? You go do surgery first. And sports medicine, um, you can do uh, from family. You can do it from other specialties as well. Just family medicine is the most common route. About 80% of uh, sports medicine doctors are family mm-hmm. medicine trained. And I'm, and I'm talking about medical sports medicine. There is another type of sports medicine in the orthopedic realm. Uh, and that's the one that people probably know more of. And that's the one, the orthopedic sports medicine doctors are uh, the ones who, you know, repair shoulders, uh, torn ACLs from athletes. So it's more in the surgical sense. Um, in the sports medicine that I practice is, um, you know, I do do a lot of what we call musculoskeletal medicine, right? Mm -hmm. Not every injury needs to be operated on, you know, if you broke a toe, you're not going to get surgery for it. I can, I can take care of that. You know, if you break a wrist that doesn't need surgery, I can put a cast on. It's fine. Uh, so uh, basically I'm the non-operative um, kind of um, musculoskeletal care. Um, but sports medicine isn't all muscles and bones either. You know, there's uh, uh, a good example is managing concussions. You know, concussions is a big um, topic in our sports medicine realm, um, knowing how to recognize it, diagnose, and, and treat it accordingly so they can get back to the game safely. And what is a normal day like in your life? Yeah, so uh, as a sports medicine doctor, um, you know, pretty much Monday through Friday, I have uh, clinic time. Uh, I am a family medicine doctor as well, so I kind of have a hybrid practice of seeing general primary care patients with checkups, coughs, colds, whatever, um, and then and then any musculoskeletal injury or any sports injury, they'll come see me in clinic as well. Um, I like practicing both. It's because they kind of meld with each other. Um, like I'll I'll see a um, Ironman triathlete um, who just sprained his you know ankle or whatever, but also wanted to get a, a general checkup. So um, and I like it as a family care doctor. All my sports athletes are they're pretty healthy, so mm-hmm. you know they're barely on any medicines. You know impeccable blood work. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I, I treat the healthy population, but I also treat people who want to be healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, um, a sedentary person who wants to train for their first 5k, um, they would come to see me for, um, advice on how to do that in a safe way without injury. So injury mm-hmm. prevention is big to, um, people with conditions like, hypertension or diabetes, um, you know, uh, uh, so I would see them and then, uh, give them an exercise prescription. Like Mm -hmm. this, these are the exercises you can do to help bring your blood sugars down, or this is what you should do to bring your heart rate or your blood pressure down. So that's where my family medicine comes into sports and saying, it's not, it's not just pro athletes. You know, I take care of everyday people who just want to be healthier. I love the expression exercise prescription. That's great. The first time I heard that. And what games or teams have you covered? Yeah. So um, sports medicine isn't just about seeing patients in clinic. It's uh, uh, the best part of the specialty is to go to games uh, for free uh, (laughs) on the sideline. (laughs) So, uh, so, and wearing the, the team swag so to speak yeah uh, with the polos and the khakis and shoes um so the teams i cover um i cover a couple high schools um in houston um you know uh and that's the majority of where my uh, my patient uh i guess base comes from from the schools but it's not just the um high school athletes since i'm a family doctor, you know, I also take care of the, the coaches, the English teacher, the principal, you know, things like that. So I'm really more into like the community of the, of the school, um, which is great. I love, I love that sense of community. Um, college wise, I take care of Texas Southern university here in Houston. Um, uh, professionally, 
with Major League Rugby. Uh, I cover the Houston Sabercats and Major League Soccer. I help out with the Houston Dynamo. Um, internationally, um, uh, I'm on the pool for USA Rugby, and um, and I see a couple of Olympians who kind of live in the Houston area, mostly from the track and field. So, um, so my breadth of game coverage is can range from middle school field hockey all the way to marathons. <laughs> marathons, right? Yeah. yeah, I remember from a previous conversation you mentioned you you cover and you run marathons. Yeah, yeah, and that's actually yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. That's actually my favorite event to cover. Um, I am on medical staff for the Houston Marathon. It's a huge marathon here. Um, a lot of people run at least around like 20,000 people run it. So the way I see it, that's 20,000 potential patients to see should they get injured. Um, it's always held, well, not this upcoming year because of COVID, but um, it's always held like on MLK weekend in Houston. It's cold, but not too cold. And Houston's pretty flat. So it's what they call a fast course. People like to, um, hit their PRs or personal records and see if they can qualify for Boston, you know, and in the running world, the Boston marathon's the pinnacle of, of the field. So if you can make the time, so a, a lot of pros come down for it. And a lot of people who aren't pros who feel like they're fast enough and they'll try to qualify. Mm -hmm. And it's great. It's great seeing them. Uh, some of the people get injured, um, and then they finish and get injured or hurt themselves. And I'll see them in, in the medical uh, area. And they just, they say everything hurts, but they have a big smile on their face because <laughs> they qualified for Boston or they're wearing their medal. It was their first marathon, you know? So it's, uh, it's very gratifying to see those patients both succeed and in pain at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you personally do any sports or any healthy activities you prefer to do? Yeah. So um, I got to, if I talk the talk, I got to walk the walk, right? So um, so for, as a sports med doctor, I try to stay active. Um, I, uh, I lift weights uh, just for, you know, strength training. Um, I also like to run. Um, we didn't mention about the Houston Marathon. Um, I can't run the Houston Marathon because I'm also a medical staff. So uh, what I actually do is I run the half marathon uh, mm -hmm. every year. Um, and then right after I finish the half marathon, I go straight into medical and take care of patients. With your medal? With my medal, with my stethoscope, and then... <laughs> People always look at me like, who's this crazy guy who just ran 13 miles and starting to see patients? So um, I, I do it to prove a point that anyone can run a half. Um, it takes a little bit more training to do a full, but I think anyone can do a half marathon. Okay. What are some of the common injuries you see on your everyday life? Sure. So most of the common injuries that I see are – you know, like the big joints, you know, ankle sprains, knee injuries, uh, shoulder injuries from throwing or, or working out. Um, so, you know, like kind of like the big joints of the body um, during football season, concussions. Um, lately, though, um, interestingly enough, in this uh, work from home kind of era, uh, due to COVID, I've been seeing a lot of like ergonomic issues, people with neck and back pain from sitting too long. Well, during your introduction, you also talked about your academic role. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes. So my official title is assistant professor at Baylor College of Medicine. So I don't see patients Monday through Friday morning and evening. So I split my time between seeing patients and teaching. Um, I also am a faculty advisor for uh, the med school. And what that is, is that uh, I, I mentor a group of first year medical students and I am their faculty mentor slash advisor till they graduate. So um, that's why I feel comfortable talking about medical student education. It's because uh, 
I, I pretty much know the curriculum, know when you should take step, what to study for, uh, you know, what board scores are needed for what specialty, um, any networking I can do with your specialty mentor, if you want to consider a different specialty or a specific specialty guidance. I also teach the, uh, the physical exam course at Baylor too. Um, and that's, that's the course that every med school has, um, where you learn, it's what we call like the doctoring course. You know, you learn how to use the stethoscope and listen to the hearts and the lung and the abdomen. So, um, and what I like about that physical exam course is that um, the way I was taught at Ross is the same way that um, the students at Baylor College of Mass are being taught as well. So, um, uh, and I feel like that's, you know, when it's, seamless uh, when I do the um, the teaching but too it just tells mm -hmm. me hey you know Ross actually prepared me well uh, to practice out in the real world and teach in the real world it looks like it's been working out so far you are so accomplished it's great uh, how did you end up at Ross to begin with good question um, so I decided to apply to med school during my senior year of uh, college and I did apply to U.S. med schools. Had a few interviews, um, got waitlisted um, at those schools, and then um, I heard about Ross. Um, you know, I've always was interested in some sort of primary care. Or family, um, obviously, I went into family medicine, so I figured why not just apply and see if I can get in. And um, got the acceptance letter, and. Uh, decided to just go for it let's let's try it out and see if i can do this and uh yeah and that that's pretty much it and then i just went through it um by no means i breezed through it i did work <laughs> i did work for that degree but um you know it got me to where i am today and we're super proud of you. Thanks for representing us and uh, being so accomplished, as I mentioned. What kind of advice do you have for any pre-med or med students that may be considering sports medicine? That's a good question. Um, well, one, as I said, personally for me, I didn't know that was even a specialty until I became, until I graduated med school. But now, since you guys know that that this specialty exists, um, I would say uh, know your anatomy. You know, know your muscles. Know what where they attach you to the bones. Um, a, a lot of the things I see is um, having a good basis of your anatomy, and um, uh, and also um, trying to stay active health wise, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, you don't need to be a doctor to tell people that you should exercise to for good overall health. So, um, but just having that kind of, um, purpose and background is like, Hey, I'm, I'm here to promote general health, you know, make you mm -hmm. healthy. Um, and then, uh, I feel like that's a good, uh, basis of being a good sports medicine doctor. Dr. Salapas, thank you again for your time. I often talk to pre-med students who come in with this idea of how glamorous the life of a doctor is. And that's not, majority of the time, not necessarily true. Certainly seems to be in your case, sir. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. You sound like you are living the life and you enjoy what you do. I, I sure do. Uh, I always joke around with med students and uh, prospective students in my residence and they ask, why'd you go into sports med? And I was like, well, I can't afford these tickets. So I'm going <laughs> to see if I can, let me be your team doctor so I can be in the sideline. <laughs> and I may see you at the next Olympics. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Break dancing. Yes. Yeah. Break dancing, curling, whatever. I'm going to try to make my way to the Olympics as a doctor, not an athlete. Oh, no, I, I will see you on that dance floor. Okay. <laughs> Thank you again for taking your time. Everybody out there, we will see you next week. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for listening to Ross University Checking the Pulse, a pre-med podcast. 
This is Milena Garcia, your host. This podcast is made for you, so let me know what topics you want us to cover on future episodes. You can send me your comments, feedbacks, and requests to mgarcia at rossu.edu. Definitely follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and our YouTube channel at Ross Med School or on Facebook. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, I am working my way to five stars. So remember to send me your comments and let me know your ideas. If you're on Spotify, remember to click on the follow button to get our future episodes. All right. See you future Rossies and pre-med explorers next week. This mini podcast is edited and produced by our in-house guru, Chris King.